boil it down to the basics, I, I consider them to be the owner, right? You are the person that owns the project. You, you, you need to own all the details to the project. Um, you are, not that you're solely responsible for the success, but I feel like, you know, you shoulder a, a good amount of the, the, that you know, responsibility to help drive and make that project a, a success. Hey, thanks for tuning in. My name is Galen Lowe with the Digital Project Manager. We are a community of digital professionals on a mission to help each other get skilled, get confident, and get connected so that we can deliver projects better. If you want to hear more about that, head over to thedigitalprojectmanager.com. All right. Hey, everyone. Thanks for hanging out with us on the DPM podcast. My guest today is a longtime digital project manager who has spent over 20 years working in digital agency contexts as well as just technology in general. From humble beginnings as a Microsoft certified systems engineer to building large scale e-commerce and marketing websites for large national brands, he has run the gamut of the digital world. Today, he is the VP of Professional Services at Oomph, located in Providence, Rhode Island. In his spare time, he is a disciple of the culinary arts, who is currently hell-bent on mastering his barbecue brisket recipe, and is also one of the co-organizers of the Boston Digital Project Manager Meetup Group. Folks, please welcome Matthew O'Brien. Hi, Matt. Hey, hello, hello. Thanks for having me. It's really good to be with you uh, today. It's great to have you on the show, yeah. I'm looking forward to chatting about hiring project managers and some of your tips. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to share whatever, whatever tips I have with you. I, I hope that, that uh, some of this is helpful to people. And, um, but it's just good. It's good to talk project management with, a, with another fellow PM geek. <laughs> Absolutely. We're going to nerd out today. Um, but first, let's, uh, let's let the folks know about yourself. So you've made an impressive ascent from digital project manager to becoming a member of the leadership team at Oomph. Uh, and I imagine it's been a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. So I thought I'd ask, where do you get your inspiration from? What inspires you to keep plugging away at it? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, you know, definitely blood and sweat, probably too few many tears. Um, for me, it's uh, it's a it's a drive to just understand things. I'm I, I really like to understand how things are made and how they're built. You know, the how and the why. And it's it's not just in technology. Like I, you know, on the on 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 the side, everybody's got their hobbies, right? I, I I'm way into like right now woodworking. I, it's super interesting to see how things are physically built. Um, so yeah, just kind of I'm super motivated when when I learn more about the <laughs> kind of the under the hood, the, the tech, the, you know, the how, the why, and just, you know, being able to see the, the great things that, uh, you know, the teams that I've, I've, I'm working with and have worked with in the past that, that we're able to build and to create together. It's, it's awesome. It's awesome. I'm really inspired by other people. So we're going to get you to make some DPM chairs for us eventually. Oh, nice. <laughs> I like Maybe that. some nice rocking chairs. There you go. <laughs> um, even at the level that you're at right now, what are the things that you're trying to get better at these days? Uh, so much. Um, for me, I, I spend less time obviously working with clients and on projects as a project manager now. Um, so for me, it's 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 more the people skills, uh, being a better manager of people. Um, you know, it's not something that I, is my background managing people. Uh, so just trying to, trying to become better at that, uh, being a better listener, uh, being a little bit more observant and uh, a discerning individual, you know, kind of reading between the lines when somebody says, no, I'm fine. And, you know, they're really not, uh, trying to pick up on that stuff. Um, and, you know, but beyond that, just learning a little bit more about like the business in general, it's, this, it's kind of interesting now digging into the operations side of things and how we measure how we're doing as an org and, and how we can, you know, set goals and, and strive to achieve those things. So just learning a, lo a little bit more about the business. Absolutely. I think that's one of the coolest things about digital is that, you know, it's fast paced and there's a lot of opportunity to do a lot of different things. You know, you do this, uh, it kind of starts as this technical endeavor, and then the soft skills, the people management, the business operations, like you can, you can really sink your teeth into it and, uh, and, and get a lot of experience in digital. Um, just by virtue of, of, of growing there. Yeah, there's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot to do. And I, and I think what's great about that is you could, and you could have a whole nother podcast on this, the different, 
you know, growth paths uh, for people uh, for a PM, right? Yeah. So now you're talking. Now you're talking. <laughs> All right. We're already lining we're up the next that. podcast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is now a series. Okay. <laughs> um, one thing I wanted to ask inside or outside of work, is there anything that you've stumbled upon recently that's just making your life super awesome? So, yes. And um, it is the, uh, the the Mr. Chicken covers of pop songs on YouTube. It's a it's a it's a some person with a rubber chicken that is just squeezing that thing in and out and like you know it the chicken singing along with the music. It's 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 hilarious. Um, is it in pitch? Is rubber chicken pretty close? I would say <laughs> uh, pretty close. Yeah, and. Uh, <laughs> You have to check out Bohemian Rhapsody. It's hands down. I think it's the funniest one. Although I would, I will also say, Take on Me, Aha's Take on Me is pretty good too. So <laughs> I'm definitely gonna check those out, folks. Mr. Chicken covers of pop songs, Bohemian Rhapsody, Take on Me. I'm gonna check these out after, right after this, right after this recording. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. Uh, all right. So why don't we get into it? Let's let's talk about hiring and nurturing digital project managers that are or can become in some way, shape or form technical. So just to clarify, not necessarily a technical PM per se. That's a bit of a different thing. But we're going to be talking about how you find folks who are willing to become technical enough, I guess. Uh, the folks who are willing to immerse themselves in technology and in the process, own things, get things done. Um, you yourself, you're someone that I consider to be quite technical. You are legitimately a systems engineer who became a project manager and who is now a team leader. So you've written code, you've migrated databases, you've created something sort of like Acquia Site Factory before Acquia Site Factory even existed. Um, so I think you're, you're a pretty technical guy and arguably a lot of digital project managers and a lot of our listeners may have come at it from that other direction. So from less complex digital projects to increasingly more complex ones. And I suspect that your expectations might be a little higher than the average bear when it comes to technical prowess as you're sifting through that candidate pool. But it's also why I'm really keen to get your perspective on how you hire and grow good DPMs. So I guess let's, start at the beginning sure yeah <laughs> we'll take a running start at it uh so f first of all because it's a pretty um it's a role that sometimes gets described a lot of different ways the jd is always a little bit different but how would you describe the role of a digi digital project manager on your team yeah i mean that's a great question um to boil it down to the basics i i consider them to be the owner right you are the person that owns the project you you, you need to own all the details to the project um, you are not that you're solely responsible for the success, but I feel like, you know, you shoulder a, a good amount of the, the, that, you know, responsibility to help drive and make that project a, a success. And, um, so yeah, you definitely, you, you, you own it. You, you, you're, you're client facing, you're talking to the client, you're, um, you know, also in, inward facing, working with the team and you're working with, you know, strategy, design, account management, um, you know, development, engineering. So um, you've really you've got to own all those different pieces uh, of of the project and and uh, kind of bring them all together. Yeah, that's a fair point. At Oomph, you are end to end. So even uh, I kind of framed it at the beginning as technical equals like development savviness, but not necessarily even that, like knowing and owning each piece of that life cycle, whether it's in design or UX or development or testing or pre-launch, it's kind of this, that sort of definition of technical and the willingness to become technical, I guess for our conversation, we mean not just code and building stuff, but the whole, the whole, the whole shtick. Yeah, no, absolutely. Because I mean, all of those other pieces we do use technology to do those things. Um, so yeah, yeah. And, uh, I mean, you take design as a, as an example, like you should be familiar with the technical, uh, terminology and, and, and aspects of design. Right. So, uh, to me, that's, that's important to understand, uh, to understand what, what our UX and our design team is doing and what they're talking about and so on and so forth. So, yeah. 
Oh, I like that. I, and I think that maybe brings me to my next question, which is what is the most important thing that, in your eyes, a good DPM brings in terms of value to clients and also to the team? So on the client side, um, I, I look at... I look at project managers as uh, they're, they're professional technology translators, right? Um, so again, because you're you're both inward and outward facing, um, it's it's the ability to kind of take the the complex and to be able to distill it down into something that is understandable uh, for for the clients. So that you know, and and then uh, conversely, you're able to talk with the client and understand their business goals, and then help to kind of bubble that up to, you know, the, the, the technology teams, the design teams, et cetera, and help them to understand what it is that they need to achieve, what, what the outcomes are uh, that would help to, uh, to, to make a project successful. I mean, I, when, I, when I used to, oh, I shouldn't say used to, I still have a resume, but when I was circulating my resume, I, I liked to describe myself as uh, someone who thinks in zeros and ones but speaks English. So, you know, that ability to be able to think um, technically, but still be able to explain it to a client in a way that is, is going to be understandable to them. But two, I, I think, um, you know, when you, when you understand the technology and, and just how complex and difficult things are, I think that positions you as a project manager to much better communicate the value that your company is bringing to the client and bringing to the project. You know, to them, they might think that, what you're working on is not all that complex. They just they just think about the the end outcome, but there could be so many things that have to be done to to get to that point. And so, if you, you can help your your clients to understand all that goes into it, all the process, all the all the technology, everything that you do to arrive at that end product, I definitely think you're helping position them to really see the value that the company as a whole is bringing. Yeah, I really like that. It's like a distillation. Like the skill is also is yes, being the messenger, yes, being that proverbial babel fish, but also distilling the important things in a way that they'll they'll get value out of. Yeah, absolutely. Both ways, I guess, to clients and and back to team. Yeah, and and, and then and then back to the team. I think um, you know, for for you uh, when you understand what someone's doing on a regular basis. Um, how many, how many projects, you know, how many of us have said to somebody like, why is this taking so long? Right. <laughs> um, well, if you understand why it's taking so long, that gives you a little bit of empathy, right? When, when, when your, your, your engineer, or your developer says like, oh man, I'm, I'm really struggling with my local environment today. Like, mm -hmm. and for me, a, a couple of years ago, <laughs> I was, I was like, man, I keep hearing this from people over and over again. Why is this so hard? You know, I've built websites and. <laughs> All I did was set up like, uh, you know, MAMP or, or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. and, and I was up and running. Um, so I was like, I'm just, I'm going to see how hard this is. And then I decided <laughs> to just like clone a repo and try to set my local up running Lando. And I was like, wow, this is actually really complex and hard. And I ran into error after error after error. But it built empathy for me that like, mm -hmm. yeah, this is, this is not easy stuff. Um, <laughs> it's difficult. And, um, yeah, so so I think empathy is is an important thing. I also think that um, when you speak the same language, like uh, it's just going to increase. It's going to improve the communication between the entire team. Like if you know what they're talking about, you know you're not going to have this crazy blank stare on your face, and, and you know, or like somebody says something to you and you're like, okay, and you walk away and you really don't get it. Like if if you can communicate better when you're speaking the same language you're 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 apt to have better results and accomplish more together as a group um and then lastly i feel like for the team wh when you're a little bit more technical i feel like you can kind of be that first line of defense right mm -hmm. like you're 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 uh, tier 1 support um so that you're kind of knocking things down answering questions for your clients and letting your team kind of focus on the more important things uh, that they really should be spending their time on. And, and I think when you do that for them, I mean, your team is just going to love you and really appreciate that. So they're not getting interrupted throughout the course of the day. So there's a lot that, you know, good DPM brings to the, <laughs> that, brings to the table. That, that is a lot. Yeah. So yeah. for anyone out there who's a digital project manager and isn't sure what the value that they bring or how to communicate it, that's probably that's probably a good start. But yeah, I, I, I agree. I mean, in, in, in my past, I've seen great digital project managers in the sense that 
things get done. But the ones who are like, just get it done, they were actually short-lived at an agency. Um, I found they were kind of like, okay, you deliver that project. No one really likes you. Um, you got to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You want Versus, your, you have you want tried your team members this? to like you? I mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, that, and, 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 and your team members want you to care about what they do and have some kind of understanding of what they do. Yeah. Um, which maybe brings me to a loaded question. Yeah, it's a loaded question. So my loaded question is, how technical does a DPM on your team need to be? So in other words, what do you expect a DPM to be able to do to drive your projects to successful delivery? So for example, do they need to know how to write code? Maybe. Uh, <laughs> so so is, it an, is it an absolute requirement to know how to write code? Um, no, of course not. But, but I do think that it's important for them to understand a little bit about how code is written. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, and, and also I think I, I would like them to have some pretty good basic working knowledge of like HTML and CSS. Um, that's mm -hmm. really important, you know, because again, you think about that like, like tier one support type of thing. I would like you to be able to pull something up in a browser and right click and inspect element and look at it and be like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, this is a little bit off. Or like maybe do a quick in browser mock up to show a client what something might look like and mm. get their buy-in on that general uh, approach. Like, I think that's really important. And I, and I do expect them to know some of that stuff. But do I expect we work with PHP and, and JavaScript and, you know, uh, do I, I expect them to know how to write code in, in those languages? No, not at all. Does, is, is there anyone on your team currently who has access to Git? <laughs> yeah. Who could commit? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, there's, a, there's a bunch of us that, that actually uh, have have access to Git and, and, and do um, do that. They so, some even can uh, some even contribute to the the PR uh, process a little bit. Huh. You know, for simpler <laughs> PRs, like right. yeah, like if if it's a SaaS change, like it's, yeah, I have a couple of PMs who have no problem going like, yep, that's good, approved, ship it. You know, nice. <laughs> I love that. How do you go about? Uh, I'm talking, coming back to that sort of tier one model, I'm thinking I've seen both. I've seen uh, those project managers who think they can do tier one, but everyone on the team's like, no, 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 don't, don't speak because you're going to say the wrong thing versus building that trust. So people are like, oh, yeah, that person knows what they're talking about. We've shown them how the process works. Um, they're going to do fine to answer, you know, these questions and then they'll escalate to us when, when necessary. How do you, how do you sort of get people on your team to that point? Um, where the team trusts them and they trust themselves to, you know, not do something that's completely, uh, you know, out, outside of the process. Um, yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I think we, we certainly don't, uh, just throw them into the deep end of the pool and say, figure it out. You know, um, w the, the way that our, our organization is structured, um, we do actually have teams that are dedicated teams that work together all the time. So they're dedicated cross-functional teams. Um, so they get used to working with one another, um, and they develop a rapport and a relationship with one another. So I think, you know, much more rather than, you know, bouncing around, like I'm working with this group for, you know, this project and then this group for this project, um, there's, there's a, a rapport and a, a level of trust and comfort that gets developed there over time. But, um, having, you know, having a technical person on a call with you, um, you know, to be able to kind of see what they're doing, you know, and, and to be able to be there for support for a while is, um, is, is definitely helpful. Um, but, but in terms of like getting them comfortable, um, you know, we, we strongly encourage that our, our PMs try to level up, if you will, from a technical ability side of things. So we firmly encourage people to, to do some training. Uh, we, we, we encourage them to, you know, uh, build, build, <laughs> build a demo site or something like that to like really try to try to like dive into the the coding not coding but the, the technical side of things and, and really start to learn some of some of the technology i love that sort of learn by doing and then also um what you're saying about like having a technical person on a call uh and folks who have worked with me will know that i will always say oh so and so will keep me honest here yeah but i think the answer is blah 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 and then they're like sort of <laughs> and then you kind of learn <laughs> for next time <laughs> yeah yeah and I, I to me one of the things that i always encourage people uh to do is from from the project management side is like 
ask questions. Um, I, I'm probably re- like, I'm one of those people who is really annoying because I ask a lot of questions. Um, you know, don't do, and, and, and tell them to do it like, A, do it respectfully and B, don't do it in front of the client. Like, not, cause you right. don't want to come across <laughs> sounding like you're questioning, uh, the, right, right. The, the solutions, but Hey, take, you know, take 10 minutes after the call and, and, and kind of ask your engineer. So like, why did you recommend that? I, I'm really curious. What's the benefits to this? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, definitely be, be inquisitive and be curious and, and, you know, want to know why developers and engineers are making the recommendations that they do. Cause you'll, you'll learn a lot from them. I love that kind of zeroing in on the why, uh, cause that's generally speaking, a, what you'll have to explain to a client, a sponsor, or stakeholders, and B, it kind of helps that core understanding for yourself. That's very cool. Uh, one of the things we talked about uh, in the past was kind of knowing and understand, uh, knowing and understanding technical terms. So, like the lingo as well. Um, what's, what's your take on that? And 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 what are some of the expectations you have of folks on your team to kind of speak uh, in speak the technical what am i trying to say use the technical terms correctly <laughs> yeah no i fully i fully expect them to do that um yeah so for for our our org um currently we, we're, we're mainly working with um with drupal we have some wordpress clients we're starting to get into some decoupled stuff with like api first headless cms uh tools but i 100 percent expect them to know uh, the difference between a module and a plugin. If you say that you're going to install a plugin in Drupal, I'm like, ah, no, because there's no plugins in Drupal. It's a, uh, you know, they're modules. Plugins are in WordPress or like, you know, content type. Content type is a Drupal term. Custom post type is a WordPress term. So like, it's important. I know it may sound like it's a, a little thing, but I think it's 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 important to 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 understand the terminology um, because I don't know, just it makes it, it gives me confidence, and I'm I'm sure it would uh, give the client a little bit more confidence that mm-hmm. you, you you do in fact know what you're talking about. So definitely need to need to learn the lingo, need to learn the terms, and and not just learning the lingo or the term. You actually need to know what they are. Yeah, yeah, fair. And also, I mean, some of our clients now are savvy. They know what all the terms are. They've studied up on Drupal, and you know they were probably put on the project because they have that knowledge. So. Absolutely. Sometimes you have in-house. I mean, sometimes we, we do like staff augmentation projects where we're working with a, uh, like an in-house dev team. So, there you go. wow. Yeah, you really got to know what you're talking about there. <laughs> Is there somewhere that you send someone immediately after they, they make that mistake? They're like, they say plug in. You're like, go to. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. There's no like uh, virtual dunce cap that they have to wear on a Zoom call, right? <laughs> But what about like where where to learn where <laughs> okay. to like skill up on some of these terms? Yeah, go to the corner. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Um, we we uh, for again for Drupal, we have a, a Drupalize Me uh, account, so oh, we, yeah. we, uh, we we absolutely um, encourage and offer that to new uh, hires to go through uh, that training. It's fantastic. It's it's you know really uh, sh- there there's a lunch lot of like short chapters that you can go through pretty quickly to to learn some of the terminology. So. That's a, that's a really good resource for Drupal. Um, for WordPress, I mean, there's a, a million things out there. So, yeah, we we do in some cases too. You can use like uh, Code Academy, not Code Academy, excuse me, Udemy or like Lynda.com or like there's some LinkedIn training too that uh, we'll we'll let people right. do. I like that. Very cool. Um, let's let's dive into hiring. So, when you're hiring. When you're hiring for a digital project manager specifically, what are some of the things that you're looking for? Are you usually looking for someone who's kind of turnkey and can just like plug in? Or do you specifically look for talent that you can foster and sculpt and grow them into what you need them to be? Yeah, so it depends. Um, Sometimes you are looking for more of that turnkey option. Uh, Someone who's got a little bit more experience, got a little bit more, um, you know, techie in them. Uh, but in some cases, mm-hmm. we may not have the budget for it. So it, it really does depend. But I, but the one thing that I will say is, again, we're mostly at this point a Drupal shop, right? And it's mm-hmm. kind of a more niche uh, area of development. So there's not a ton of 
that I've come across anyway, resumes that I've, I've, I've received not a ton of people who are like, yeah, like all I do is manage Drupal projects. Um, so, so oftentimes they're not soup. They're not a completely turnkey anyway. So for me, mm-hmm. it's, it's not as important. And, and the other thing to keep in mind too, is technology changes. Uh, when I started, we were mostly a WordPress shop. So, oh. you know, and like I said, we're, we're moving in the direction of working with other tools, tools change. Um, so it, you know, as long as you're a, a technically savvy individual, um, I think that's the key thing. And, and what I look for in, is more on the, like the, the quality side, who are you as an individual and a person? Hmm. I mean, I think that's, that's the key thing. Are you willing to learn? Do I see kind of like that, you know, roll up your sleeves and figure it out mentality? That's, that's the thing that's the most important to me. I really like that is, and how that kind of shapes out in a resume. If we're talking about the process when you're kind of going through that stack of resumes, is there anything around that that kind of jumps out at you that says, yes, I am a, I am a roll up my sleeves kind of problem solver? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I think so. I, and it's, and it's less about like the, you know, the million bullet points of your responsibilities that you had on mm-hmm. your resume. W- one of the things that I like to see is more around the accomplishments, you know, that you that you made uh, as a project manager, um, you know. So was there some really like challenging thing that came in, and you guys, you, you and your team, you figured out how to how to get it done? Um, it, it's less about like I managed ten clients, and I'm ha- you know I was blah 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 blah. Like it's just a bunch of bullet points of of the core responsibilities of things you did. We know what the core responsibilities of a project manager are. So what I want to see is accomplishments. What are some really big, cool things that, that you, you did and that you accomplished? To me, that's going to jump out at me way, way more and, and make me think like, wow, this, you know, this person, this person can, can really get stuff done, you know? And I would love to see some variety too, if possible. Um, if it's, if it's all the same thing, then, you know, that doesn't necessarily tell me that you're a roll up your sleeves and figure it out kind of person. That means that, Right. You, maybe you're just kind of more like a, you know, we're just, we're, we're stamping widgets here, if you will. We're like, we're cranking out the same thing. And it's more the process that you're following than your thinking ability that is what's making things successful. And would you say variety as in sort of types of projects yeah. and maybe scale? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Can you do big things? Cool. Can you do small things? Yeah. Have you worked on different to- with different tools? And again, doesn't have to be Drupal. I don't care. Right. Like, but you, you work with a, a, a variety of different platforms and tools. Absolutely. That's, I think that's very, very critical. Cause again, that shows me your critical thinking skills and your ability to just dive in and figure, figure out a, a platform. Awesome. I love that. Um, for, for the hiring managers listening, I thought I'd ask, do you have like a silver bullet favorite question to ask in an interview that kind of helps you understand whether a candidate will have that roll up their sleeves, get her done problem solving mentality. Um, do I have, no, <laughs> I don't have a silver bullet, uh, necessarily, but, um, what we do use from a question perspective, but what we do use is, is a tool. Um, if I can okay. talk about that for a little bit. Yeah, let's do it. All right, cool. So, um, we, we use a particular tool uh, in our hiring process called the Predictive Index PI. And um, what that is, is a, it's kind of like one of those personality tests that you take. It's not too different from like a DISC profile or, or something like that. Um, I think Myers-Briggs is another one. Um, mm-hmm. And so this, this is a, a measure of like kind of who you are as a person, your like, formality you know do do i need to follow rules or like can i work in ambiguous situations like you know am i am i looking for you know am i super outgoing and able to like meet new people or am i kind of reserved um Mm. and and by by using a tool like this what we've done is um it it has something called a a pro and what a pro is is you, you say all right for this particular position these are all the qualities that I think would make this person like the ideal candidate. Mm-hmm. Right. And so then you, mm-hmm. and, and we did that with a, a couple of different people in our organization and then somebody takes their test and then you can kind of, you can compare them and say like, how closely 
does this person align to our pro, if you will? Um, you know, hmm. and, and it'll give you a guide like, oh, they might struggle in this area. This is where they're really going to excel. This is how you can help them grow. Um, this is how you can help them get better at their job. And for me, um, what this does is it takes a little bit of the gut feel out of the hiring process and it, it uses a little bit more data and science. So that, that way, if you've got like two or three top candidates, they're all pretty equal, you know, all pretty even. Um, th this is going to really help kind of make that make that decision for us. Where about in the process of this? Is it like screener and then please fill out this, uh, you know, the predictive index assignment and then interviews begin or is it later? No. So so it's it's we, we screen a little bit. We'll do uh, an interview and, and then we'll have them fill out the PI and, um, you know, but we, we could do it a little bit earlier um, because the PI. <laughs> The PI tool can actually give you um, suggested uh, interview questions as well, based off okay. of this person. And yeah. so, I, I mean, I think that's pretty cool. You could, you could use it a little bit earlier, but I, I typically don't. I usually, I usually just kind of reference it towards the end of the process. Yeah, that that that, that makes sense. Um, one thing I had in my head is, you know, are you usually looking for the same thing? Like, is there a mold, or is it a mix that you're looking for, or or neither? <sighs> I'm looking for the same thing, kind of, honestly. Yeah, I mean, we can all be different people. It, I, and again, you don't have to match that pattern perfectly. Like, we have a lot of great PMs on our on our team, and, and everybody's a little bit different, right? But I'm just looking for you to have, like, pieces of, of those things that, you know, kind of, I think are going to make you great. Makes sense. Oh, I, I like that. Um, for folks who are sort of in the interview process um, and specifically hiring managers for our hiring manager listeners. What is, what are some of the things like the big cardinal sins that you've seen from DPM candidates that you're like, okay, no, I'm not going to hire you. <laughs> you just said that thing. And no, I can tell just from you saying that, that you're not the right fit. Don't, don't, don't fake it. <laughs> like, you know, like if, if, if you haven't worked on Drupal, uh, don't say that you have, right? Again, going back to like, oh yeah, like I'm super familiar with all of like the plugins and stuff. Like, it's <laughs> like, I, come on, just say like, yeah, I've never Dust worked camp, in it. Go to your room. <laughs> yeah, I've never worked in it. I've worked in, I've worked, I've worked in this system or that system, but like, I, I have, you know, and I, I understand at, at its core how how CMSs work, and I'm pretty sure I can figure this one out, right? Just be honest. That's that's what we're looking for. And I think, yeah, like that honesty and also like the, the person who's going to fake it is probably the person who's not going to ask those questions to better understand what the team's doing. Because they're going to be like, ah, just fake it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I like that. Um, all right, we talked about the predictive index. I know you like to add a little bit of science to that once you've kind of gotten down to that short list of candidates. But when you're getting to that short list of candidates, what are some of the most important things that impact your decision to add them to that short list? Like what are the key ingredients that you know you can work with? What are the things that makes you think, yeah, this person is made of the right stuff? Yeah, yeah. Um, definitely, again, it's, it's about, it's not, it's not so much about the skills, but it's about like your abilities and your, your critical thinking skill, your critical thinking abilities, right? Hmm. And like, again, those, those bootstrappy, like, um, roll up my sleeves, I'm going to figure it out, I can pivot, I can learn. Um, one, one thing that I, I forgot to mention that I wanted to mention to you was like during the interview process, one way that we can get a good sense for people's ability to do this is um, we actually do role playing in our interviews, <laughs> which is really fun. Um, and I don't, I tend not to tell people about it in advance. Um, <laughs> so I just kind of spring it on them. Um, <clears throat> because I feel like as, as a PM, right? Like sometimes you have advanced notice as to like difficult situations and you can kind of prep for it. Like, Oh, you, you want to talk to me? Okay. What do you want to talk about? All right, cool. Let me get prepared for that. Sometimes you're on a call and like, boom, like client just drops a bomb in your lap and you've got to be able to quickly handle that circumstance and, and, and figure out like what you're going to do. Maybe you need to pivot. Maybe you need, I, you need to figure something out on the fly. And so what we do is we've, we've written up these scenarios. Um, they're real <laughs> from circumstances that other PMs on our staff have, have dealt with in the past. 
And um, essentially what they have to do is I, I let them read the scenario and it may be like, okay, you know, you're on a call and you have to let the client know that you're asking for more budget because of X, Y, Z, or like you're on a call right. and the client just says like, Hey, you remember that thing that I was supposed to get you that content? Well, I can't get it for you for another three weeks because of X, Y, Z, but we still have the launch on time. Right. Um, so they get to read through the scenario. They can ask me questions which is also, I think, really key. Like if you ask, if you read through that and you ask me no questions, like, I don't know, that tells me something a little about your, your thought process. Like, this is before the scenario begins. It's yeah, like exactly. Like, what is, what exactly does this, okay, yeah. Exactly, and, and I tell them that all the time. Read through it, ask me any questions that you have now, and then when you're good to go, what I want you to do is literally, you know, pick your hand up to your, <laughs> say bring bring right and you're calling me and i'm the client and and uh, you know sometimes i'm nice and sometimes i try to be a bit challenging but it's fun to see how they react um because again it's about your ability to kind of think on the fly and i think that gives me a good indication as to how you're able to think in difficult circumstances and what i like is that part of part of that sort of quote-unquote test in the role play is that asking questions before the scenario starts. Uh, I think that's a really, a really cool tip uh, for folks who are, you know, designing their interview process and think of it as, okay, let's see how this person acts when they have their, you know, hand up to their face, like it's a phone versus the prep that they're doing in advance and how they're, how they're thinking about that. I really like that. That's cool. Um, all right. So let's, let's move on from hiring. Uh, and let's say, you know, once you've made your decision, um, I imagine there's always a little bit of sculpting required, um, A, to make it work for your team or, you know, B, just those nuances. So for example, like you mentioned, you might bring on someone who is familiar with CMSs in general, maybe not specifically Drupal, maybe not even WordPress, maybe something proprietary. Um, and you know, you kind of need to, you know, quote unquote, baptize them into, um, into the way things work. Um, but also I think you're a pretty strong proponent of just continuous improvement, personal growth, um, you know, iteration over iteration. Um, so I thought I'd ask you about nurturing your team. <laughs> um, so like, how do you how do you help your team grow and expand their knowledge and learn? Uh, yeah, that's a that's a great question. Um, I mean, I think it starts with with monthly one on ones, right? You know, to making sure that we're we're touching base on on a regular basis uh, with with each team member. So I I meet with each project manager just to see how, how things are going, kind of uh, check in on some of our, uh, you know, our goals that we've set for them. Um, you know, each time we, we do uh, like an annual or, or regular performance assessment, we set goals that we want, you know, want them to achieve. And that's a collaborative process with them. Uh, so just kind of checking in and see how they're doing on that, you know, what, what assistance do they need? Um, another thing that I actually think is interesting is, um, I talked about our uh, kind of like our cross-functional teams right earlier, um, but we also have like departmental groups that we call guilds. So like we got a PM, oh, cool. okay. yeah, we got a PM guild, and so our PM guild meets uh, twice a month for an hour to get together and just kind of like talk about different things. Like, hey, you know, what's what's new? What have, what have you learned recently? What are you working on? What challenges have you encountered? And it gives them the ability to kind of just share knowledge with one another and kind of, you know, help help each other sharpen their skills a little bit. Um, and then and then the last thing that I really like is we have a, a professional growth program. Uh, we call it PG time. And um, so everybody gets an allotment of PG time and it's it's similar to PTO, right? So you just like you're requesting time off for, for you know, vacation, you, you request PG time. So we have a tool that you go in, you request the day or whatever it is and say like, hey, I'm, I want to take a day off because I want to um, attend this class or I want to go to this conference. Um, and it's it, it, it then gets sent to your manager. Your manager has to review and approve it. Um, and, you know, most of them get approved. Um, it, it, but of course, we want to make sure that they're using that time to grow their skills as a project manager uh, or or that it's dedicated towards something that we think makes the most sense for that individual. But then once once that's approved, I mean, that goes on the calendar 
um, you're out of office. Like we treat it like PTO as well. Like you can't just say like, oh man, sorry, can you move your PG time? Cause client X right. or client Y. Nope. We just tell, we don't, and we don't tell the clients that we, it's PG time. Cause then they're going to be like, well, <laughs> who cares? Get them back on this project. No, we just like that person is, they're not available. They're, they're off today. So, uh, and that, that ensures that they're able to, uh, get the, you know, give it the time and attention and focus that it truly deserves. I like that sacred learning time. And uh, you, you sort of alluded to it, but it sounds like, um, the folks on your team have, have some say in what they want to do with that PG time. Like, Hey, I saw this, you know, whatever the conference, I want to do this Linda lesson. Um, you know, what do you think? And they kind of bring that to you. It's not necessarily like dictated down top down. That's really cool. I really like that. Um, and I guess in terms of just professional growth and personal growth, I guess, um, is there anything that you, if they come to you with, uh, asking for recommendations, is there something that you recommend to your team members, um, especially those who want to take on more complex projects and they really want to scale up in digital? Yeah. I mean, take advantage of the community, right? Um, you know, the digital project manager.com. Um, there's, there's also like local groups. Um, I, as you mentioned earlier, I help co-organize and run the, the Boston DPM group, uh, meetup group. And we meet once a month, uh, second Tuesday of the month. And w we've had so many amazing <laughs> visiting speakers. And, and, and the thing that I love about it is, is we're not like, we're not always just talking about project management. Um, we, we've covered a number of different topics. We had a, we had a, a great talk on web accessibility. Um, we had a, a really cool talk on, um, you know, analytics and measurement. And this, this, uh, the woman who, who, who presented, she showed us all these really cool, like Google, uh, data studio dashboards that she creates and like why she's choosing these metrics for, for measuring success. Um, so like there's a really good opportunity there to learn about like, again, all things, uh, digital, all things technology and to, to help skill yourself up. So like if, if it's the Boston group or if it's some other meetup group or maybe, maybe, maybe it's like a, you, I don't know, you want to join a Drupal meetup group or something like that. So you can learn a little bit about the tools and the platforms that your team is using on a day to day basis. I mean, I think that's a, that's a great opportunity to kind of skill, you know, skill up. I really like that, that sort of notion of, you know, getting outside your comfort zone um, to kind of immerse yourself in some of the peripheral things that we need to know as digital project managers, like a Drupal meetup group. Like, I think that's a fantastic idea, you know, join a UX group, join a service design group, you know, um, where you might be the only project manager there, but you're there sort of to learn and chat about the craft. Um, I really like that. That's very cool. Um, one sort of last tough final question. Uh, You've hired someone on your team, you've been working with them, but w when do you know it's just not the right fit? You know, you've made a bit of a mishire. How do you know and, and what kind of drives your decision to part ways with team members? Yeah, this, it's not an easy thing. Um, and and it's, it's a good question. I mean, I, I feel like I was probably, probably wait too long on this one because I, you know, we're all trying to be the eternal optimists. Um, no, but honestly, just when, when I see somebody not able to, 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 to grow, you know, somebody who is not kind of leveling up on, on, on a, you know, skills from, from a skills perspective on the technology side of things, um, you know, at, at Oomph, uh, we, we want people to be a little bit more technical on the PM side, right? And so it, it made me think of this really great post I read from Patrice Embry um, about, yeah, being the one who, <laughs> being the one who takes, you know, are you a note taker basically? And hmm. um, you know what? What I got out of it was that you know you don't, as a PM, you're more, you're more than that, right? She, she compared uh, like a, a project manager with like an admin or an administrative assistant, right? You know, the mm -hmm. admin is, is and, and there's nothing wrong with being an admin, right? But uh, setting meetings, you know, sending out agendas, taking notes, distributing uh, meeting notes and so on and so forth. Like we're looking for more than just admins, right? So be more than that. 
you know, just don't, don't just be the one who takes the notes, be somebody who drives and leads the conversation. And, and if you're unable to do that within a reasonable amount of time, then you're probably not the right fit at Oomph. And that's okay. It just You're just not the right fit for us. And so we're going to have to let you go. It's a challenge now more than ever um, because you know, in the past, we, most of our uh, organization was in Providence. Um, mm -hmm. we've, we've since started, you know, hiring and, and become a more of a distributed company. But in the past, it was easy to just like pop into a, a conference room and be like, I'm auditing your class today, right? Um, <laughs> like, I'm just going to sit down and listen to you and see how you do. Uh, but I can't do that anymore unless I just like very conspicuously show up on a Zoom meeting and then people are like, <laughs> who's this guy that we've never met before, right? Um, in which case, it's, it's so, it's difficult to see, see how, how, um, how the PMs are doing. So that's where I need to mm -hmm. rely upon feedback uh, from mm -hmm. other people uh, because again, I'm not working on these projects or, or, or I, I literally do need to just schedule some time to just be like, Hey, I just, just jumping in and just wanted to say hi and introduce myself to you client for no reason in particular. Um, so it, th th that has made this a bit more challenging. So note to people, if you uh, work at zoom, please, Find a way to allow people to do anonymous listening. I know that sounds <laughs> terrible. <laughs> it sounds horrible, but like you're killing my you're killing my my ability to manage people uh, remotely. No, that's true. It's one of the things that's missing from that virtual experience. Yeah, uh, which is in and of itself a whole other topic for sure. Yeah, <laughs> we will make this a series. <laughs> oh, but yeah, I mean, it sounds. I mean, it sounds a lot, and I hear this a lot that the digital project manager role. Uh, at Oomph uh, and elsewhere is kind of a leadership role um, or is genuinely a leadership role. I mean, obviously it has leadership aspects to it, but it's not the note taker per se. Um, that role needs to kind of step in, roll up their sleeves, understand what's going on, communicate it across to all the different parties, you know, be the coach, be the cheerleader um, and, and, and care and not just did it get done check the box. Um, and I think, you know, for people who are, who are kind of still thinking of it that way, or who have tilted their resume that way, or who are kind of on the hunt for someone, and they're going through all these resumes that are like, I am the best, I make the best Gantt charts. Um, <laughs> like maybe that might not be the thing that should pop out. The thing that maybe should pop out is some of the, the soft skills um, that you've mentioned and the accomplishment statements and things like that, that shows that they understand the value that they bring. It's really cool. Uh, listen, Matt, these insights, these insights on hiring strong DPMs that can grow into becoming great project leaders are all really, really super valuable. Um, I think the one thing that really resonated with me that kind of changes the way I look at it is that, uh, the, the PI, the index, um, and the sort of scientific aspect of making that decision. So that's not just a gut feeling, you know, I think like many hiring managers, I've made sort of mishires based on gut before. And I really like that idea of inserting that into the process, not to put people into a box, but to kind of understand how you'd be able to grow and mentor them into what you need them to be uh, and whether you'd be able to do that. So I think that was really cool. Thanks for sharing that. Um, coming back to sort of, you know, what it takes to, you know, the right stuff uh, for being a digital project manager. What advice would you give to a hiring manager who's just starting to write a job description for a DPM role? Um... No, no, no. What's most important to to you and to your team? You know, I mean, uh, is it a platform? Like, is is that the most important thing? I mean, uh, is it is it not the platform? Is it more about um, your note taking skills? <laughs> uh, you know, just know know what's most important to you, and and what's going to be most important to uh, the other team members. You know, maybe ask them. Like talk to your developers, talk to your designers, um, you know, ask them what are the things that would make their lives easier? Not that like, that's our job to make people's lives easier. Well, it kind of is, I guess, right? I mean, just at, get, get, you know, get their feedback and get their buy-in. Um, and, and, and the other thing that I would say is, um, it, you know, if possible, try to involve them in the hiring process if you can, mm. you know, like, even not not saying that like you have to have them uh, be on the screenings or like be in the interviews or whatnot, but like 
if you think you might make a hire and it's going to, it's going to be somebody that people are working with, why not just like let them talk to this person, do, do a quick mm-hmm. intro and, and just ask them, Hey, what'd you think of that person? You know? Um, I, I don't know. I just think that's, it's, it's a way to show respect for, for your other team members and stuff. So. Yeah, that could help. Hundred percent. I mean, yeah, they they are going to be working with them. <laughs> sure, I like that. Um, how about for job seekers? So, for job seekers looking for digital project management roles, what's the most important thing to remember when you're positioning your skills, technical or otherwise? Yeah, if you don't know it, don't make it up. Uh, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> um, and, and and again, like I think it don't just. <sighs> Again, if, if you can not, not just say that you do things, but show that you've been able to do things, those accomplishment mm-hmm. statements that we talked about, you know, I think that is really going to help, help, uh, the, the hiring managers see you as somebody that stands out as different. Like, don't just say that you worked on a WordPress project. Don't just say that you built a Drupal project and some details in there that are going to make it seem like it's a little bit impressive. Like somebody's gonna, mm-hmm. so, so that somebody's going to say like, oh, okay, wow. Yeah. That's, that's pretty complex. Like, that's really cool. You, you must have to be, fairly technical and skilled to have been able to manage a project like that. So yeah, I think, I think that's what I, I would say. Awesome. Listen, Matt, thanks so much for joining us today. It's been great having you on the show. I really appreciate it. Yeah. It's, it's been awesome being here. I, I, I apologize that uh, my blinds are putting lines in my face now. Um, <laughs> so. At least you have sun there. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. It is nice and sunny out today. So, but it, it's been awesome being with you. Thank you so much for having me and uh, and chatting. And, and if anybody hears this and they want to connect and, and and chat me up a little bit more on the topic, you just definitely find me on the DPM forum or like reach out to me, and I'd love to talk more about this topic. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks again, Matt. So what do you guys think? What are your hacks, tips, and tricks for seeking out good talent? What works? What doesn't? If you're a job seeker, what do you wish hiring managers would say that they never ever say? Uh, Tell us a story. What was the impact of hiring the wrong candidate for a technical role? What jobs have you interviewed for that really put you through the ringer when it came to technical knowledge? Let us know in the comments below. And if you want to learn more and get ahead in your work, come and join our tribe with DPM membership. Head to thedigitalprojectmanager.com slash membership to get access to our experts forum, mastermind mentorship groups, workshops, live mentorship sessions, ask me anything sessions, and a variety of experts, eBooks, templates, and more. And if you like what you heard today, please subscribe or stay in touch at thedigitalprojectmanager.com. And until next time, thanks for listening.